Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we are going to start installing the race car software. Let's go. Let's draw up a map of the software install. We're on the host PC. We have downloaded and set up Jetpack. We use Jetpack running on the host PC to flash the Jetson operating system along with some selected libraries onto the race car. Then we will switch over to the race car and perform several steps. First, we will build the Linux kernel and modules from source. Second, we will install some needed drivers, such as the Z stereo camera driver. Then third, we will install ROS, which includes building Catkin workspaces. And finally, we will install the race car packages themselves, which will include hardware support. Do me a favor and give this video a like or comment if you like these drawing animations. Thanks. One of the options for installing the software for the race car is to go to the GitHub account, MIT Race Car, and go to the Install Tools repository. There they have instructions for installing both the race car software and the host software. However, we're not going to do that because we need to make some modifications to the kernel to support the configuration that we want to run. We are going to start off by installing L4T, Linux Fortegra, on the race car. We're at the host computer right now. We are going to use Jetpack 3.0 L4T installer to install L4T and various libraries on the race car. Next. Next. On the race car, we have a Jetson TX1 developer kit. Let's select that. Next. Type in our password. It's very secret. I have done an install on this machine before, so some of the things are already installed for us. On the Jetson, we are going to install L4T 24.2.1. We are also going to install CUDA. We do not need to compile the CUDA samples. No action. We will also install TensorRT, CUDNN, OpenCV for Tegra, and VisionWorks. Next, please read the license agreements listed on the left. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. I accept my fate. Accept. Hmm, important note. Depending on the component selection, please pay attention to the prompt in embedded terminal. <laughs> It makes you sound needy when you say that. Come on. Okay, we've completed the host installation. Installer will continue with device post installation. Next, please select the network layout. I'll take that one. Okay, next. All sorts of stuff is about to happen. Next. Please put your device to force USB recovery mode. Well, I think it is. Let's take a look. New terminal. Let's sing the song. LSUSB. There it is. 0955-7721. It is connected. Here we go. Enter.
Installation of target components finished. Press enter key to continue. One. Mm. Again. A whole bunch of times. Okay. The Jetpack L4T has been installed. Finish. Okay, now we're ready to move over to the Jetson TX1. We are over on the Jetson race car now. If you remember in the last episode, we installed a solid state disc, but I don't see it on the desktop. So let's go create a partition so that it becomes available to the entire world. Let's open up a terminal. Let's move this up here so we can have terminal happiness all the time. We will recite the magic incantation. Pseudo parted. Everything you know and love will be destroyed. Do you want to continue? Yes. Let's open up our disks application. Let's add a partition. Let's make it ext4 compatible with Linux systems. The name Jetson race car 120. 120 sounds fast. We'll call it Jetson race car. Format. Format. Okay, much better. Let's mount our drive. And now we will do the development trick. We are going to copy the contents of the internal flash memory, the EMMC, over to the SSD. Okay, let's go over to our boot directory. We'll go into super user mode. And let's copy the current boot configuration and save it. Now let's edit our configuration We will make a copy of the EMMC. Label this EMMC. Then we will change this over to the SSD. And SDA1 is where it's located. Now what should happen is when we boot the machine, it will boot off the EMMC, but set the root directory, this right here, to be the SSD. That way we have the full size of the SSD to develop on and are not limited by the size of the EMMC flash. Moment of truth, let's try rebooting this baby. We'll shut it down. power button. Okay, and we're back alive. This is the internal EMMC here, and this opens up the SSD. The next step is to build the kernel. First, let's install a browser. I like Chromium. Let's go find Chromium now that we've installed it. Here it is. Welcome. Why, thank you. Now let's go to the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub. Okay, we're in the build Jetson TX1 kernel. Let's clone this repository.
git clone. And let's switch over to that directory. This is a three-step process. Let's get the kernel sources. Let's set the local version up here. General setup, local version. And we'll call it JetsonBot. Version 0 0.1. Make sure we have the leading dash in here. Return. For now, I think that's the only change I'm going to make on the kernel. I'll start adding different modules as we go along. So make sure I save this. Save. We're ready to close it. Time to build the kernel. The kernel is finished building. Let's copy the image. This will copy it into the boot directory of the SSD. Because we are booting off the EMMC, we also have to copy the image there. So let's take a look at the copy image script. Let's open up a file browser here. We'll switch over to the kernel directory, source kernel directory. And basically we want to copy this. but we want it in the boot directory of this. So let's grab this and we'll put it right there. It should look something like that. And now let's copy over the image file. Now we should be ready to reboot and see the Jetson bot kernel. A little tip here, I made an extra copy of the EMMC on the SSD. It's in this EMMC folder. So if anything goes untowards, I can just copy over the old EMMC and it should be good to go again. Let's reboot to make sure everything worked. This is a good sign. You name minus all. Jetsonbot version 0 0.1. We are installing the Stereo Labs Z SDK on the MIT race car. They used an older version of the SDK. We go to legacy releases. We go to the Jetson version. TX1. ZSDK 1.1.1 This type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep ZSDK run anyway? Keep it. It's over here in our run folder. Let's change its permissions. Properties. Permissions allow executing file as a program. Okay. Open up a terminal. Let's put this in a more appropriate place. Let's open up a new window for a file browser. Put a new folder in there, we'll call it Z. We'll put that over into our Z folder. Okay, let's switch over to our Z folder. 
and run the installer. A lot of talk. To continue, you have to accept the EULA. Accept? Yes, please. Would you like to install the dependencies? Yes, please. Install samples? Recommended. Why, yes. Installation complete. We'll worry about the rest of the Z installation later. Let's move on to installing ROS. The next step is to install Robot Operating System, which is commonly referred to as ROS. On the Jetson Hacks GitHub account, there is a repository named Install ROS TX1. Let's grab that address. And clone the repository. We will switch over to that directory. And let's install. ROS is installed. Let's set up a Catkin workspace. We will call it Racecar WS. Okay, ROS is all set up. We have our workspace. We're now ready to start work on the MIT race car itself. One difference between the MIT race car and this race car is that the MIT version runs off of ROS Indigo. We are going to be running off of ROS Kinetic or at least we're going to try to. The next step here is to install the race car specific robot operating system nodes. Thanks for watching.